Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Our God and our Father, the only true God to whom our prayers can be directed, we come to you at the end of another day thankful that you have brought us through. We are truly grateful that as we go through each and every day that the Lord Jesus is with us and your Spirit is in us to keep us grounded and at peace as our various trials and temptations confront us. We can sing with joy, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, because we know that whatever we face here is nothing compared to what we look forward to. We remember those who are sick and suffering. May they feel the Spirit's presence with them at this, their lowest moment, and be assured that you, Father, will get them through. We think of all the turmoil in the world and watch as people literally run to and fro like sheep without a shepherd. Come into their hearts, Father, so lives can be changed. So now, Father, as we sing and praise and listen to your word, refresh our hearts and draw us closer to you. We ask these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Blessed with night, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us go to God in prayer. God of love, God of wisdom, God of knowledge and understanding, we enter into your presence tonight as we come together in this devotion to hear a word from you in season. We ask dear God that as we reflect on your word that you would bring us knowledge and understanding that you would open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive and accept your truth. So gracious God, reveal your word to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. James chapter 3, verse 13, our text for this devotion. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. James, in chapter 3 of his letter, which was written to the 12 tribes, the Jewish believers that are scattered across the world, asks them the question about who among them has wisdom and understanding. And I believe that as we reflect on this word, that is this question is one that is still applicable to us in our faith walk today as believers in Jesus Christ, as we seek also to determine who among us are wise and understanding. So what then is this wisdom that James is asking about? The Bible Dictionary provides three definitions of wisdom. First it states that wisdom is the art of learning how to succeed in life. And it explains also in the ancient days that persons were taught that there was a, an orderliness to the world and that success and happiness is realized when one lives in accordance with that orderliness. The second definition tells us that wisdom was seen by some persons as a philosophical study of the essence of life. And the third definition, the one which we focus on mainly tonight, is that wisdom is spiritual and that wisdom therefore comes from and begins with God and our faith in Him as Lord and Savior. Proverbs 1 verse 7 tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And since this life is more than living by a set of rules and being rewarded physically, then wisdom becomes that rule or guide through which we shall live. And James then in this in the text is here referring to the wisdom that comes from God. He's referring to that spiritual wisdom that begins with God and is also in our faith in him as Lord and Savior. Wisdom, we are told in Proverbs, begins with the fear or reverence for God. It is where having that true devotion and commitment to our faith is necessary. It is where being unapologetic and intentional in our faith walk in God and in Jesus Christ is critical for us today. This fear of reverence for God is foundational to developing that godly wisdom that James is asking the question of in the text. And Job in chapter 28 and verse 28 tells us that the fear of the Lord is true wisdom 
and to forsake evil is real understanding. Proverbs 4 verse 7, the writer also tells us about wisdom. And the writer states that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Brothers and sisters, getting or asking for wisdom must be the main focus and desire for every believer. It's in the text that the writer tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. It is not a secondary requirement in our faith, but it is to be foremost. It is to be primary. And we must set out in all of our getting to get wisdom. And in verse 5 of chapter 1 of James again, he advises the reader in these words, if you need wisdom, he says to ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. And James is therefore telling us that if you need wisdom, if you need that godly wisdom that he's referring to in chapter 3, he's saying to ask God, ask the God that you know who is generous and he will give whatever you ask of to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. And we know that because he said in the word, ask, and it shall be given. But he also goes on then to remind us that when you ask, not if you ask, but when you ask, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Be sure of your relationship with God. Be sure of your trust in God. And be sure of your faith being in God alone. So brothers and sisters, James tells us that we need to seek after wisdom. And the writer in Proverbs tells us also that wisdom is the principal thing. And we must get it. And it begins with our fear of the Lord and our complete devotion to him. Additionally, in verse 7 of chapter 4 of Proverbs, the writer also speaks to us of getting understanding. He states, with all thy getting, get understanding. And this is rendered in another translation in this way. He says, though it costs all you have, get understanding. And the cost that is spoken of here, the all you're getting that is mentioned here, is of having a commitment an intentional drive, having a desire to learn and to do what is right. And we do this by spending time, all that you have, and being knowledgeable of God from his word. Though it costs all you have, Though it costs all of your time, all of your resources, though it costs your entire being and interests, he's saying, in addition to wisdom, being the principal thing, the writer is saying to us to get understanding, get 
that knowledge of God through his word. And James then goes on in the text to tell us that the evidence of one having wisdom and understanding will be seen through their good life. In verse 13b of the text, he tells us, Show your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. You say again, Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. And the works that we do in our ministries, the works that we do in our, the church, the works that we do in our communities must be done with gentleness or meekness which is a trait of wisdom. And it is not to bring attention to ourselves by our achievements or by any good work we do, but simply out of this meekness, which is born out of wisdom, it is simply to do God's will to do what we have been called to do by God and in so doing to partner with him in his mission on the earth. Additionally, we know then from the text that James goes on to tell us that wisdom that comes from the world is evident or born out of bitter envy, selfish ambition, being boastful, and being false to the truth. And when compared to godly wisdom, we recognize that godly wisdom is simply based on gentleness or meekness. Verse 15 of the text, then James tells us that such wisdom, the wisdom of the world, does not come down from above, but it is earthly, it is unspiritual, and it is devilish. He concludes the portion of scripture for our devotion tonight by describing the fruit or evidence of this godly wisdom, the wisdom that comes from above. And James states that wisdom has the following characteristics or traits. First, he says that wisdom is pure, meaning that wisdom is not aligned to or engage in any sinful attitude or motive. He also states that secondly, wisdom is peaceable. It is gentle. It has that ability or sensitivity not to be overly strict, to be forgiven and knowing when to be considerate. Thirdly, wisdom is willing to yield, not being stubborn, but conciliatory or pacifying, always willing to listen and having the skill in knowing when to yield. Wisdom is full of mercy. And as expressed in Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, where the writer of Matthew says to us, For you will be treated as you treat others, and the standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. Wisdom then tells us that we are to treat others as we 
would like ourselves to be treated. Wisdom also provides good fruit. And it is the fruit produced and is evident through wisdom. It is without partiality or hypocrisy, not hiding under a mask, but only operating according to God's standards, seeking nothing but his glory for our work that we do. These traits of wisdom, which will be evident, the fruit of godly wisdom, being pure, being peaceable, being gentle, being willing to yield, being full of mercy, having good fruits, and operating without partiality or hypocrisy are those standards by which we would recognize when we are operating with godly wisdom. And finally tonight, brothers and sisters, we reflect on what the writer in Proverbs 3, verse 14 and following, tells us about wisdom. And he tells us first that joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. The person who finds it, which means that we have to go and look for wisdom. We need to ask for wisdom so that we can have that joy. He says, for wisdom is more profitable than silver and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies, and nothing you desire can compare to her. So wisdom is profitable, and wisdom is precious. So precious that nothing you desire can compare to her. Verse 16 tells us then that she offers you long life, referring to wisdom, in her right hand, and riches and honor in her left. And she will guide you down delightful paths, and all her ways are satisfying. So walking in wisdom, in getting godly wisdom, you, we will be all satisfied and wisdom will guide us down delightful paths. Additionally, the writer tells us that wisdom is a tree of life to those who embrace her and happy are those who hold her tightly. So wisdom is that tree of life. For all who embrace her, all who desire, all who seek or look to get wisdom. And then for all of us who don't let go, who remain committed, who remain devoted, who hold her tightly. The text tells us that we will have happiness in our lives. And finally, in verse 19, we are told, By wisdom the Lord founded the earth, and by understanding he created the heavens. The Lord our God founded the earth by wisdom and by understanding. He created the heavens. So wisdom, my brothers and sisters, based on Proverbs 4 verse 7, 
is the principal thing. Is the thing that is paramount in our lives and in our relationship with God and through Jesus Christ. So therefore, in all our doing, we must get wisdom. And then the text tells us, and though it costs all you have, though you require to put in the time, put in the effort, the commitment to be intentional, to be unapologetic, and to be focused, he says, get understanding. No your God, understand and be knowledgeable of who God is. Be knowledgeable of his call for each and every one of us. And this we will find by being constant in his word and spending time in his presence. So in all you're doing, all you're getting, get understanding. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of wisdom, God of knowledge and understanding, we thank you for your word tonight, which reminds us that wisdom is the principal thing. Your word that reminds us that if we ask for wisdom, that you as a generous God will give it to us, and that you will not rebuke us for asking, but all that we require to have is faith in you alone. So help us, dear God, as we come to you, Lord, tonight to ask you for this godly wisdom that you will give it to us. And even though it will cost all that we have, help us, dear God, to get understanding so that we can grow in faith and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ as we mature in this life as your sons and daughters. So we bless you and we honor you this night. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of the Lord is in their hearts. Their steps do not slip. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.